Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. In these videos it is my intention to educate anybody who wants to learn about or improve their audio quality within YouTube videos. Although some things I talk about can be applied to other areas, I'll be focusing on YouTube video development specifically. In the last episode of the YouTube Audio Guide, we took a look at how to turn a mono microphone source into stereo like after we have recorded it. So not pre-production or anything like that, like literally just post-production. But in this episode, we're going to take a look at microphones and uh, the different types and basically giving you all the information you need to make the right choice in which microphone you should use. Now there really are no wrong choices because sound is an awkward thing to work with and as long as you can edit it and record it properly then you can get a good sound. But there are a couple of things you should know when uh, going into recording. So let's get started. Now there are three main connection types you'll be looking at when working with microphones. You have USB, jack and XLR. First off we can instantly rule out the jack cable because pretty much nobody uses them these days for any pro audio function. They are basically just karaoke microphones and they're really not the best kind of microphones to use because they're just just take my word for it do not use them. So that instantly narrows the choice down to USB and XLR. An XLR connection is the industry standard for audio recording, but interestingly, an XLR cable refers to a two-conductor shielded cable with XLR connectors on each end. If you choose an XLR, you will need a dedicated audio interface that accepts the connector, which most people do not have. If you do, this interface should have the basic options for gain, pad, fa and phantom power. Now, phantom power is not as cool as it sounds, to be honest. I mean, some people listen and think, phantom power! Oh, but some condenser microphones need it. It's literally it's just the form of 48 volts from the interface. That's it. That's all phantom power is extra power. Using this method of connection will give the best recording results as the analog to digital conversion is taking place within a dedicated interface designed specifically for the job, unlike a USB which handles all the conversion inside the microphone. But USB isn't all bad. I mean, it's very convenient and depending on the manufacturer, it can yield to very high results. It needs no de dedicated interface and even condenser microphones can draw enough power from the bus inside your computer. The microphones can then be set using the operating system's control panels. The drawbacks about USB though is mainly in sonic quality and sample rate. Since the analog to digital conversion is happening inside the microphone, the maximum sample rate it can produce will be limited. Most max out at about 48 kilohertz and 16 bit. Even the high-end Blue Yeti has this limitation. And to those of you who don't know, the bit depth is basically the dynamic range. The higher the better. Now you know the basics of which connectors you can choose from, we shall get into the actual microphones themselves. There are quite a few to choose from. A unique expensive option is a ribbon microphone, but I will only discuss the two main competitors in this field, which are dynamic and condensers. First off, we will explain the dynamic microphone. You will see these being used all the time on stage for live performances and are generally good all-purpose microphones. They use a simple design with a few moving parts. This means they are relatively sturdy and resilient to rough handling. They also are better suited to handling high volume levels, such as from certain musical instruments or amplifiers. They have no internal amplifier and do not require batteries or external power. They work basically like loudspeakers in reverse, using magnets, coils and a diaphragm. When a magnet is moved near a coil of wire, an electrical current is generated in the wire. Using this electromagnet principle, the dynamic microphone uses wire, coil and a magnet to create the audio signal. The diaphragm is attached to the coil. When the diaphragm vibrates in response to incoming sound waves, the coil moves backwards and forwards past the magnet. This creates a current in the coil, which is channeled from the microphone along wires, which then goes through the analog to digital conversion. The properties of a dynamic mic also depend on the diaphragm. Large diaphragms produce lower noise but suffer from a narrower frequency range along with lower sound pressure levels. On the other hand we have condensers. These are built in a very different way and as such are more delicate that a few bashes will damage it considerably. Condenser means capacitor, an electronic component which stores energy in the form of an electrostatic field. The term condenser is actually obsolete but has stuck as a name for this type of microphone which uses a capacitor to convert acoustical energy into electrical energy. They also require a power from a battery or external source. The resulting audio signal is stronger than the signal from a dynamic microphone. Condensers also tend to be more sensitive and responsive than dynamics, making them well suited to capturing more subtle sounds. 
They are not ideal for high volume work as their sensitivity makes them prone to distort, which is the trade-off for having a wide frequency range. A capacitor has two plates with a voltage between them. In the condenser mic, one of these plates is made of a very light material and acts as the diaphragm. The diaphragm vibrates when struck by sound waves, changing the distance between the two plates and therefore changing the capacitance. Specifically, when the plates are closer together, capacitance increases and a charge current occurs. When the plates are further apart, capacitance decreases and a discharge current occurs. Condensers can also have both large and small diaphragms. The larger diaphragms are more sensitive and can pick up more frequencies as it has more space to resonate, but also easier to break. Small diaphragms do pick up less, but are more commonly used in pencil condensers, so named for their pencil appearance and flat frequency response. And to clarify, a frequency response is the coloration of the sound recorded. Nothing captures a sound exactly, so there are slight boosts or dips at certain frequencies. In layman's terms, an automatic equaliser, or EQ. A polar pattern is the area of sound a microphone can pick up, or is sensitive to. Most dynamic microphones are cardioid, which picks up sound directly in front and rejects sounds from the side and rear. Although due to acoustics you can still hear sound originating from rejected sources as they bounce off surfaces. Condensers usually have the option of using other polar patterns. Some are built to use multiple patterns, whilst others are built specifically for one. Hypercardioids are similar to normal cardioids, but are more sensitive and directional and have some sensitivity in the rear lobes which can make mic placement tricky. Figure 8 is a pattern that uses two diaphragms to record an area both in front and behind the microphone whilst rejecting the sides. This is ideal for recording podcasts or conversations with somebody on the opposite side of the table. Omnidirectional is the last pattern which records at 360 degrees, all around basically. Mostly used to record ambience as the microphone is picking up all the reflections from every surface. Now you know the basics about microphones and how they work. My recommendation for recording commentary would be a Blue Yeti or something similar. It's a USB condenser microphone that can use cardioid, figure eight and omnidirectional polar patterns and is extremely good quality. It is probably one of the highest quality USB microphones out there. It does have drawbacks though, it produces a lot of noise when the gain is turned up so recording quietly and editing later is ideal. If you'd like an example of how this sounds, this episode was recorded with several microphones to demonstrate the sounds of each, just find the type more suited to you. I do not recommend using a headset microphone as they usually cause problems. The small diaphragm and quality it can produce varies and is somewhat unreliable. One special case is the Logitech G930 headset, which is constantly locked to record at tape quality, 16 kilohertz or something like that. Thanks for watching this episode, and I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, then please do not hesitate to write down in the comments. Take care, guys. <laughs>